Hey troops, Roxy here and welcome to Roxy Plays Games and welcome to another episode of Around the World in 80 Days. And yes, we are back in X-Plane 11, Earth Hauler 2, and I left you in the last episode here, Bahrain International Airport. Now it was dark last time we was here and as promised we are doing a day flight just to let you know. We or I always use real time uh, or real world time, and the weather is always generated from or now that I've I've had it for a while. Active Sky. Uh, if I didn't have Active Sky, then I would have real world weather. But Active Sky is a little bit better, well, quite a bit better to be fair. Uh, so I use those for weather and time. I never change the time unless. We're doing a multiplayer flight and it's a requirement for us to adjust the time slightly. Uh, I generally like to have it real time. And obviously using Air Hauler 2, because that is set on a Zulu time, if you go and change the game in, t uh, in the game, ch reword that, if you change the time in the game or in the simulation, it doesn't go across to Air Hauler 2. So then you're... Uh, departure or your arrival times will be off by however many minutes or hours you've adjusted the in-game time. So certainly if you're using Air Hauler 2 you're going to have to fly on real world time. Right, that's <laughs> the waffling out of the way. Today's plan, let us go over to uh, Sim Toolkit Pro so we can have a look at the route that we're flying. Here we go. So we're here in a Bahrain International Airport and the plan today is we're going to be flying all the way over here to Mumbai, VABB. This is a monster flight. I think this is um, up there in the top five of my routes that I'm going to be flying. Um, not as long as the one across from West to East America and then from um, JFK over to the UK. There's going to be obviously the longest ones, but it's certainly going to be up there. Um, I was initially planning on breaking this into two legs and doing what I'm doing today, but over two legs. However, uh, things have been cropping up and I haven't had the opportunity to do a day flight, which is obviously what I promised last episode. Um, I've only had the opportunity to do night flights and um, obviously with Air Hauler 2 having to be on the real time, uh, it, it just wasn't going to happen. So we're doing this long flight and today the plan is, go back over to explain, is we're going to be using air traffic control. So, for me, the hotkey is the return key, and when we press that, it brings up the air traffic control menu, and then up here you've got this little icon with the headphones, um, which you can obviously click as well. So, first thing we're going to need to do is file our flight plan. Really, really straightforward to do this. Click on this button. Aircraft identification, it should populate the correct plane. Um, and as you can see here, it's the Zebo Boeing 738. I'm not going to talk too much about VATSIM uh, during this episode, but I'm going to kind of cross reference the two of them. Obviously, the progressions I've mentioned before is we want to be doing some VATSIM flights. Before doing VATSIM flights, we want to get as much training and knowledge in us as we can. So, although the in-game ATC is not VATSIM by any means, okay? By any stretch of the imagination, it is not the same. So please don't think that if you do the in-game ATC, you can then go and do VATSIM. The whole purpose of this is just to get people into a procedure of changing frequencies, which you can do it automatically uh, with this um, plugin, if you want to call it that. Uh, in the VATSIM, you would do it manually. But you can do it manually in this as well. Um, but more importantly, it's getting through the idea of you, the ATC giving you a command and you have to follow that command. And that's what you have to do in VATSIM essentially. Yes, you're going to file a flight plan. Yes, you're going to be following that flight plan um, a majority of the way, if not all of the way. But traffic that is flying around may affect what you're doing. And then the ATC 
whatever controller on whatever part may have to tell you something different from what you originally planned to do. Speed, altitude, directions, they all may change, okay? So nothing actually goes 100% to plan 99% of the time. Um, but there are the occasions where you, there's no issues, there's no traffic around and you get to do exactly what you plan to do. So using this in-game ATC, you can have that little bit of practice. The ATC will tell you to do something. As, a, as an example, you may be flying on 090 and they tell you to fly on heading uh, 120. Okay, you need to change that heading. Uh, if you can't do that in this, then you are really going to struggle in VATSIM um, because they tell you to do something, you don't do it, they shout at you, you then get kicked off the network. The other thing that we're going to go through over the next couple of episodes is reading charts. And I'm not necessarily going to go through it in this one. I may do it for the arrival uh, runway so we can see where we're going to be taxiing. I'm not quite sure yet because I've not been there, so I don't know what it's going to be like. Um, but that's not the purpose of this one. The purpose of this one is just basically showing you the in-game uh, ATC. Right, sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent then, but I just want to kind of get the point across of why we're doing all of this and what the purpose of these videos are. They are a progressive um, bunch of videos to get you to the point where you can comfortably go onto VATSIM and do some flights. So we're in the uh, 738, make sure that is correct. Um, the manufacturer is the Boeing. And the aircraft model is the 737-800. The airline, right, so we're going to be changing our airline. So from now on, rather than being the rocks, um, random made up airline, we are going to be British Airways. And the reason being, when you pick a proper airline, they will obviously have the in-game air codes, airliner codes. And... Well, I haven't looked through all of them and cross-referenced all of them, but certainly the few that I have looked at are the same on VATSIM. As an example, British Airways, in here, you will be called Speedbird, and then followed by your flight number. So if we stick with the same flight number of 333, we would now be, rather than BAW or Bravo Alpha Whiskey or British Airways, we will be Speedbird. So our call sign is Speedbird 333. If you leave this as no airline, it will call you by your aircraft identification and your aircraft model. Okay. Obviously, that's in slightly separate, I think. We're going from OBBI. Our arrival airport is Mumbai. And we are flying at an altitude of 33,000 feet. The next thing we would need to do is we need to get our route and copy into here so that the in-game ATC kind of gets us to go roughly along that route otherwise it's just going to do a direct from a to b so let's go back over to our sim toolkit pro and what we want to do is we want to go into flight summary and then up the top here you've got your flight route now the flight plan you don't put your um, departure and arrival airports you don't put them in the other thing that it doesn't want in the flight plan for the in-game ATC, uh, that seems slightly different, but the in-game ATC is it doesn't want any SIDs or STARs. So we've got a STAR, uh, Keto 1A, but it doesn't have a SID, so we're not worried about that. It doesn't want any directs, so DCT means a direct, so it doesn't want these directs in here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to copy from this to here we want to copy that we're going to have to delete that dct um, but we've got the majority of the route here now you could type this okay so i could copy that go back over to explain i could manually type in here uh, goco and then ovana and then so on and so forth in here or we can do it the quick and easy way of pasting it in so control c to copy control v to paste and then we'll hit flight plan now i can guarantee that there's going to be some issues here like dct as an example um if i can go back to there thank you dct is going to be an issue and every 
every now and again some of these airways aren't recognized and I don't know why that is I don't know if it's because the in-game ATC is outdated um, and it's just not recognizing these um, uh, routes I, I really don't know the reasons behind it because it does say that you can put them in but then when you put them in sometimes it doesn't recognize them so we're going to click file flight plan and as I thought some fields above need your attention it's saying unknown nav aid DCT that's because it's not a nav aid it's a direct so we're going to delete that file flight plan it's not recognizing this airway N318 so let's find N138 Oop, N318 and let's delete you and you just keep going through like this until it goes through so it doesn't recognize that one but it's recognizing B415 and N685 so that's what I mean I don't understand what the problem is it's not recognizing this one and that's it okay so that's all done it's now automatically connected because we're on auto tune recommended frequencies it's automatically connected us to the ground control to major tom <laughs> yeah I, I won't give up my day job promise right so we're all parked up we're pretty much ready to go uh passengers are on board and We've done most of our things. What we can do now is request altimeter, so we can check that that is correct. Brilliant. Now with VATSIM, as well as the in-game ATC, when they give a command, we have to read it back. Bahrain International, altimeter 2944, speed burr 333. And the reason being, is ATC needs to know that you have understood what they've said. If you don't read it back, they'll keep bugging you until you answer them, or with VATSIM, you'll just get kicked off the network. With this one, it'll just keep going over and over and over and over, repeating the same thing. Now, here's some differences with VATSIM compared to a uh, traffic control. Uh, you would gain clearance. Oh, sorry, let me rewind a little bit you would have to listen to a thing called ATIS, right, which is a automatic uh, program. Um, sometimes it will be a live person, but nine times out of 10, it will be a recording uh, on a comms frequency. And what that will do is it will give you some information, the runway in use, the, the wind direction, the weather, and at some point it will say an information code. As an example, information alpha in VATSIM when you uh, first log on and you contact whichever controller you are uh, contacting depending on who's online because not everyone's online all the time you will tell them your aircraft um, type and the information that you have listened to so information alpha as an example so you would turn around and say as an example, and this isn't like, you know, spot on, um, Boeing 738 with information alpha request clearance. Okay. We're kind of doing something very basic, similar in the air traffic controller. Okay. So we're going to request clearance. The only difference here is in the, in the air traffic control uh, in game is we requested the altimeter, um, we would have, in VATSIM, listened to ATIS, which would have given us um, the altimeter, as well as some other information. One mistake that I did make then, sorry, and those of you that are keen and eared would have uh, picked it up. We, <laughs> we give our call sign uh, when we contact them for clearance because obviously they need to know who who's talking so speedbird 333 um, we could then give the aircraft, uh, aircraft type so that they know just in case we've put something wrong in the uh, flight plan um, and then obviously request clearance um, and as I said the in-game one keeps repeating stuff until you finally answer them. So let's read back transmission. I'm not going to read that airport back. That was um, a load of letters and words. 
So we need to squawk 4700. This is your transponder. And when they say squawk, we just need to change this frequency to 4700. And then before we move, taxiing, flying, anything like that, your transponder needs to be on. So when we're parked up, um, before we start taxiing, it, it can be on standby. Excuse me, I've got hiccups. Uh, but as soon as we're going to start taxiing, it needs to be on. Um, and as you can see, it's connected. And when we, uh, or before we take off, we go T-A-R-A. Okay. Uh, there is an ident button on here. Ident. Sometimes the ATC, not in the game, but in um, in VATSIM, will tell you to ident. Uh, you just click this button and basically it just sends out like a, a transmission for a few seconds which lights up in the ATC's controller so that they can see you um, amongst all the other planes. You kind of stand out a little bit brighter. Right, so we have got clearance. Um, now what would happen in VATSIM is you would then ask uh, permission to start your engines and push back. So let's pretend we've done that. Um, so we are going to go to ground services, better push back, request ground push back. Please show me where you want to go. Ground and cockpit, tow is driving up. Okay, so we're waiting for the tug to come. And what I'm going to do now is double check to make sure there isn't anything around. I can't see any planes directly coming in straight away. I can't see any planes um, moving back. Obviously, in VATSIM, that's all controlled by ATC, but when we're doing single player games and using things like uh, Traffic Global, uh, you, you have to do all those check ins yourself because um, I'm just having a look at the altitude of this plane. It's not coming in, is he? Oh, he's, he's descending. Definitely, he's coming closer. I don't think he's coming. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. How far away are you? 15 miles. He's slowing down. Oh, he might be coming in. All right, we'll keep an eye on this. This this plane looks like it might actually be coming in. Uh, right, anyway. The reason why I'm saying that is because what I don't want him to do is I don't want him to come in and then start taxiing to where we're going to taxi and we get in each other's way so I'm just waiting for pushback to sort himself out just connecting the wheel up so connected and bypass pin inserted release parking brake Right, releasing parking brake. We should have enough time. Let's quickly get this done. Releasing parking brake. Engine start. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Let me move this down this way a little bit. Engine one timing. Start valve open and two rising. Right, we've got fuel in our centre fuel tank, so we'll put the fuel pumps on for the centre. Uh, let us go. Progress on that screen. Um, First few legs are all fine. Twenty-five percent and two. Let's get the fuel cut off up. Let me reset you. Get ready to start this one. Engine two timing. Right, that plane's ten miles out. I'm not sure whether we'll get to take off before it lands, but we'll uh, try our best. But I don't know what ATC uh, runway it's going to give us. <laughs> Depends on which one we're going to go for. Oh, let me do my fuel lever on this one, and then we'll have a look back outside again. So we've got runway twelve right here. Runway 12 left there, which is the longer runway out of the two, and then obviously the opposite ends there. Uh, that's eight miles out. So it's going to be landing here. I can almost guarantee that, because of the way it's coming in. 
It depends on worried taxis. We we should be good. I think we should be good. So what we will do is we will request a taxi, so it can we can find out where we're going. As I rec uh, as I thought, we're going off twelve right, which is the one closest to us. Um, and what that basically means is we need to taxi along Hotel and Romeo, which we're on Hotel at the moment. We're going to turn right onto Romeo, and then we need to stop short um, before we get to a runway twelve right. And you can see the little yellow um, arrow. That's the stop short point, and then the runway uh, start of the takeoff is going to be here. And that plane currently coming in, but we should be perfectly fine. Uh, we are going to do Go ahead and set the parking brake. do our before taxi procedure. Here he comes, looking down the street. Din, 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 din. I'm going to have to give up that <laughs> singing. I know I'm awful. I'm awful. Right, come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> yes. Right. Basically, I want to get to the point where we're going to take off before this guy comes down and then decides that he's going to taxi so off. Yeah, taxi off onto our runway. Three miles out. Right. Come on, dude. Come on. Give us our wave off. Give us our wave off. Thank you. Right, coming up to two miles out. We should be good, guys. We should be good. Actually, a little bit busy here, busier here than uh, I thought it would be. So we need to stop short here. So we need to contact tower on 11850. You could do this manually or you can just hit the read back with this checked and it will change it automatically if you watch. There we go. Now we need to check in with the controller. Is that bird landing? Right. That's us clear for takeoff, so let's go before this guy gets in our way. Start my clocks. Oh, I want to start that one, don't I? Uh, reset. Trying to do a million things here at once. Got ourselves lined up properly. Uh, let's go Toka. Kind of rush my way out of there because I just know that plane is going to um, t taxi in front of us when we're trying to take off. V1 rotate. V1 rotate. Beginning before takeoff procedure. Before takeoff procedures completed. Gear up. Four hundred. 400, let's go. Autopilot. And we need to contact tower. Uh, uh, center, sorry. There we go. Frequencies change. Let's check in. Let's 
So, changing the f um, altimeter, read back. And you can see our flight plan is kind of going off in this direction. But we're following ATC. It told us to fly on the heading of 120, so that's what we're doing. Flaps one. So now it's telling us to go on the heading of one, uh, 070. So it looks like it's going to... We're going to cross intersection this route that we should be on. And then he should give us a right turn um, to then get back onto the, the flight plan. And then at some point he will then tell us to fly um, our own navigation or something along those lines. Here, auto break off. Getting that all set. So yeah, um, it's fairly simple. You just literally follow what they tell you. Um, so we are going to do a few more of these, just to kind of get the idea, um, see if there's any issues. We, you know, we'll do a bit of fault finding along the way if we come across any any issues. Um, we will also start looking at charts. So taxiing at the airport, um, the departure, which is the SID, we'll look at the SIDs, and then at the opposite end, uh, the arrival, the approach, and then the airport taxi um, at that end. And then once you can uh, you can kind of understand them, read them, and almost preempt what the ATC is going to tell you to do, because obviously they will be going off the active runway which is all going to be down to the winds so you get that information from ATIS you can then preempt well the winds going that way so I'm going to take off in that direction um, so I can pre-plan my flight plan around that so you, you file your flight plan it may change uh, winds can obviously change um, but then if you've got a bit of an idea of what you think is going to happen when or before ATC tells you to, to do it then it makes your life a little bit easier okay right so we're coming up to 10,000 feet uh, where we will turn our lights off Passing 10,000 feet. so it's telling us to resume our own navigation so we're gonna do our Turn our lights off. That's them all done. And there's a little bit of an issue there. <laughs> turn them off. Sometimes the co-pilot will turn them an extra notch than you want to. Right, so we need to do a right turn. So let's just hit L nav. And that's going to spin us around to our next waypoint, which is all the way up here. Uh, Ovona, is it? Ovona. So that's where our next waypoint is. Um, and that's it, guys. So that is the in game ATC. And they generally won't do much now until we get near our arrival points. So what I'm going to do is rather than me sitting here. Oh, I didn't put my browser up. Sorry. Let me bring this up. Uh, browser overlay. There we go. Um, so it says the ETE of 3 hours and 40 minutes. Um, yeah, it's going to be a long flight, guys, as I've, as I've already said. I, I'm not going to sit here and record the whole thing, waiting for the ATC to potentially do something. I'm going to do my usual cut the video, video short. I'll bring you back when ATC contacts me before we're descending. Okay? Um, and then we will see what they do. I've got no idea what they're going to do. I'm not sure if it's going to completely mess up my flight plan. I'm not sure if it's going to make it harder for me to land. It shouldn't do. And from when I've previously used this in, in the past, providing you have your charts and you understand where you're going and you have your frequencies and courses all set, the ATC will generally get you to the top of the glide slope and then you can then activate your uh, localizer and approach and then land the plane. 
So guys, I will, um, well, for me, it's going to be ages. For you guys, it's going to be pretty quick. Um, but I'll speak to you in a second. Righty guys, we are back and we have got a traffic control contacting us. So I'm just going to read back the transmission. So it's telling us to head on a heading of a 100, so we are going to do that. So we're not far now. Um, let's have a quick look at our sim brief, or our sim toolkit pro, I should say, the f map. <coughs> right. Come on up. There we go. So, as you can see, we've done this whole long journey, it's been a bit of a beast. Uh, we're now here, and we are just coming up to this point, and then we're going to zip around there. So that's all pretty cool. So, although I have got a flight plan to go in, um, we are currently, what's our altitude, uh, not altitude, top of descent. So we're 130 miles away from top of descent, so we've still got quite a while to go until we start descending according to our flight plan. Um, but as you can see, it I haven't put any stars in or anything like that because the air traffic control is going to control our descent anyway. So there's no point, there's actually no need whatsoever. If there is a backup, if air traffic control goes offline, like it does in VATSIM sometimes, then obviously we need a flight plan to follow. Uh, however, the in-game ATC shouldn't, um, c shouldn't go offline, I'm going to hope. What we can do while we are waiting for ATC to contact us again, we are going to check our frequencies and stuff. So we need to be on an ILS frequency of 110.3 so we're going to put that down here oh that's already in there 110.3 110.3 oh that's handy and a course of 269 so our course is 269 and a 269 now I would normally be looking at my chart right now having a look at the um, arrival and the approach and the runway I'm not going to do this on this episode we are I'm gonna make it progressive so the next one we will have a look at the charts for the runways for our arrival and departure um, and then we'll be having a look at our departure charts and then we'll have a look at the arrival and approach charts and we can put them all together because if I kind of bombard you with loads of information it might be overwhelming um, and it might, it might put people off I mean when I very first looked at all of this I was like oh my god how can I ever learn any of this you know something I'm that type of person that wants to learn uh, that's just my nature and I just kept learning and learning and learning some more uh, oh what I did do as well whilst I was in the cruise is I actually increased my cruise speed uh, just just to speed the process up a little bit because it's a long flight I wanted to get that a little bit quicker We've been going for hours and hours. Uh, right, so we'll put that back to legs. We're due in at quarter past one, so about half an hour, a little less than half an hour maybe, uh, we should be landing. So I'm going to keep you with me now. There's no point in pausing the video again and bringing it back. We'll just stay here. and hope ATC talk to us soon because it's too quiet. I really need to stream this don't I so I've got well I say I need to stream this so I've got people to talk to. I need a community of people to be um, following me on Twitch for me for me to be able to stream to then have people to talk to but I guess you've got to start somewhere haven't you. I'm never going to get people if I don't start doing it and I'm never going to start doing it um, if I don't start doing it. So I'm guessing it's the situation where I've just got to get started and 
hopefully people will start following and people will start chatting with me so I can have a conversation but obviously I'm already part of a big community I do multiplayer stuff not as much as we was over uh, the last couple of months so like around April um, May June time uh, we was doing stuff pretty much every day that's quieting down now people are going back to work and stuff so as much as I don't intend on leaving that community because I love the guys there and we have a lot of fun um, I need to find stuff to do when I'm not doing stuff with them guys so it's gonna be, be be predominantly Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Uh, I'm not doing anything with them. Uh, Thursdays might be going as well. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, Fridays we generally do multiplayer trucking. Uh, Saturdays we may be doing uh, late night flights. I don't know if that's going to be a regular thing. We are definitely doing one tonight. Um, and Sunday afternoons we do a flight as well. I don't know how frequent the Saturday night's flights will be. But I have got some stuff coming up with um, VATSIM as well. Right, so we've got two commands here. We need to head on a heading of 100, uh, which we are. And we need to descend to 2400. So let's put this up to 2400. And we will level change. Yeah, dude, be patient, yeah? I'm in a big plane, not in a fighter jet. <laughs> Deary me, some people, eh? Right, so we are descending. Um, I am going to put my speed brakes out. Oh, not the flaps. Whoa, nearly broke broke my flaps then. Um, speed brakes are up. There they go. Just to keep the speed under control because we are descending and we are still accelerating. Uh, so let us. What have we got on here? Yep, that's fine. Right, I'm going to go to. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it as it is. We shall leave it as, is, as it is, and I should stop singing, because I can't. Right, so we're al almost heading direct to a VABB, to a Mumbai. Never been here before, don't know what it's going to be like, don't know what the runway is like. Uh, we do have an ILS. So that's something, it is quite a long runway as well, uh, from my memory. Uh, yeah, 11,000 feet. So it's a long runway. Uh, so we're just going to go auto brakes 1. Um, and like I say, I would normally, at this point, be checking charts and stuff like that. I'm not doing it in this episode, I'm, I'm holding back. <laughs> because not everyone has the access to charts, although you can get them, they are free. Um, Navigraph isn't free, but there are other sources out there. Um, but what I will be doing is adding in stuff. Um, I'm not going to turn into teacher and go through every single detail on a chart. Um, I'm not trying to make pilots out of you guys. It's more a case of I just want to give you some information so you know how to read a chart, you know how to do your flight planning um, in preparation for VATSIM. And like I said, I've said it a million times before and I'll probably say it a million times more. I wish to fly in VATSIM. Uh, it isn't for everyone. And I'm sure some of you out there watching this will be thinking I've got no intention of doing VATSIM. And that is perfectly fine. There is absolutely nothing wrong with not doing VATSIM. 
it's just more a case of that's something that I personally would like to attempt to do and well not attempt to do it's something I would like to do and do more often and it's a big community of people out there that are on Vatsim yes they're more serious they're not dicking around and doing silly little things well I say that there's some people on Vatsim that do do that but then they generally get um, kicked off uh, Vatsim for me I think I've said it before in one of my episodes if not in a few of my episodes my passion has always been to fly I've always wanted to fly it's never gonna happen unfortunately because I well I just don't have the money to uh, to become a pilot never mind anything else um, so this is the closest thing that I'm ever gonna get to flying for some people they've got that opportunity uh, you know they're financially secure not so much financially secure but financially better off than what I am so they they can afford to do it uh, or maybe you know they've grown up in a family of um, pilots whether it's be commercial or military or whatever uh, and their opportunities are a lot better than what mine has been and as much as I have no regrets for my career path I you know I, as I've said, I enjoy helping people. That is my passion. I just wish I could have got to the point where I could fly for real. <laughs> Sounds so depressing, don't I? I'm so sorry. Right, we need to descend to 11,000. So altimeter 2958. So I can put this in here while we're still in standard. And then when we come out of standard, it will put it in straight away. Um, speed brake is still up. Keep that speed down. I should have taken it off when we leveled off. Um, I just forgot. But we are all good, it's not going to stop the plane, it just slows it down. I'm in a bit of a, not a rush, <laughs> but on uh, the TV, I'm an F1 fan, fan by the way, for anyone that uh, didn't know. I, I probably will do some videos, I've got uh, F1 2018 and 19 and some older ones but I haven't got 2020 yet I'm gonna wait until it goes on sale because uh, I gem uh, historically I've always bought them or pre-ordered them as soon as they've come out I said that back to front I've, uh, <laughs> I've historically pre-ordered them or bought them as soon as they come out that, that's better um, I'm not doing it with 2020 uh, there doesn't seem to be many changes and I don't play 19 enough to age, to merit getting um, 2020. So I might do some videos on 19. But anyway, <laughs> going off topic, uh, the F1's on. They're just about to do the quali or the qualifying is going to be starting soon. So I want to kind of get landed and watch that. But I've still got a good. 15 20 minutes of before we land so I may have to um, miss the first little bit I could put it on the TV I guess joys of um see this <laughs> there's me got harping on about how much I wish I, I was a real pilot and stuff which I do generally do wish I was a, a real pilot but I couldn't do what I'm about to do now in that on my TV screen <laughs> I'm putting the F1 on <laughs> so I can um, have the F1 on in the background whilst I'm flying yay for simulation flying <laughs> but yeah for those of you that are considering uh, getting into X-Plane I would definitely recommend it and I know obviously we've got this new Microsoft Flight Simulation coming out I believe the 18th of August so uh, a month away pretty much uh, and there's a lot of hype around it and 
there's a lot of people that are apprehensive because of previous Microsoft products that have kind of looked, they've been burnt by because they've stopped um, stop supporting it so a lot of people are dubious um, about getting it uh, for me personally I'm going to not because I want to leave X-Plane not because I don't think X-Plane's any good I just want to see what it's like so I'm going to be getting it on the Xbox because uh, I've got Game Pass so you do get the uh, standard version as part of the Game Pass I will see what it's like and then if it is any good I will then upgrade it righty so the qualifying has started I know you're not here to listen for me talking about F1 but obviously if I was streaming there would be conversation going on and I don't have anything to talk about right now <laughs> but yeah I, I'm, I'm tempted to stream my flights even if I've got no one watching I can just pretend that I've got people watching and just waffle on to them and have a conversation to myself pretty much like what I'm doing now I guess any hoozle we are at 11,000 feet we can kind of see this cluster of waypoints over here is going to be where we're landing and looking at um, sim toolkit pro I can see we're not quite heading direct to um, Mumbai but we're getting pretty close to it uh, it looks like quite a big airport to be fair yeah it actually does look like a big airport let me um, bring that on the screen for you guys so I can kind of show you what I am talking about uh, I need to bring up the screen please please and thank you there we go. So here's uh, Mumbai uh, Airport that we are going to VABB and we are, as far as our plans concerned anyway, we're planned to land on runway 27. Uh, whoa, where have we gone? Bring me, bring me the airport back please, please and thank you. Yeah, so we're due to land on runway 27, so we're due to come in this direction. Um, and then we're probably going to park up here but I don't know whether the ATC will give us somewhere different to uh, to land um, and depending on how long it does take us to stop I mean if we stop here then I will most likely just come up here and then park over on this terminal here uh, otherwise if we land a little bit further down or stop a little bit further down we'll go to this uh, terminal here so terminal one for long and terminal two for short landing so yeah I thought I'd just quickly show you that um, and as you can see we are uh, not too far away uh, the flight plan was bringing us down here and then up along and then back in uh, we looks like we're heading to this waypoint here um, and then it's going to probably vet us around until we get eyes on and then it will tell us that we can um, land the plane, hopefully. Cool, cool. So we're in a bit of clouds here. Not much to see. As you can see, and this is what it would look like if he was in the passenger seat. Just clouds. Oh. Right, so we need to descend to 7,000. Three, 
send deadly hit. Seven thousand. Speed bird. Three, three, three. All right, so we're def <laughs> we're defending. No, we're not defending. We're descending to seven thousand feet. Put the speed brakes on again. Passing ten thousand feet. Keep that speed from going up too fast. Passing transition level check altimeter. All right, let's do our ten thousand descent procedures. Beginning ten k descent procedures. 10k descent procedures completed. Not sure why that turned off the autopilot. We'll have less of that, please. Less of that school duggery going on. Let's put the uh, speed brakes back off now that we're leveling off. Right, so we're in clouds. I have no idea where the airport is. Well, I don't have a visual on the airport. I'm going to hazard a guess and say that it might be somewhere around where that plane is. Whoa, whoa. Whoop. Oh, that one plane turned into three. Um, it's hard to see. what they're actually doing. This looks like, this guy looks like he's descending. This one looks like he's at quite a high altitude and this one looks like he's descending. Yeah, that one definitely looks like he's descending. It's really hard to tell because uh, when you zoom in you, the letters don't get any bigger. Uh, they just kind of zoom out with you, which is a bit of a pain. But any hoozle. Three, three, three. Right, so we're def uh, we're defending again, guys. We're defending. Derp. Uh, we are descending again to 5,000 feet um, and then uh, we're going to vector for a visual approach onto 27. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that the airport is around this location. Um, hopefully we'll drop through these clouds. We are going through a bit of a weather system as I can see on the map. Nothing bad but obviously it's given us this um, poor visual go. that we've got going on hopefully we'll come out of that pretty soon I'm hoping that it's not low I want to be able to see the runway <laughs> Because if we don't get a visual, then it's going to make things a little bit difficult. Obviously, we can use our instruments to navigate with. That's what they are there for. But on the flip, excuse me, on the flip, oop, that was a bit high pitch. On the flip side, we want to ensure that we can do things visually as well. But that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes we have to rely on our instruments, which it's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, right, okay, so the airport is kind of off in that direction, not over here like I was originally thinking. Or maybe more kind of, oh, actually, yeah, it might actually be here. But it's definitely not over here as I was originally thinking. So it could be quite possible that these two planes here, which I can't, can't quite see whether they're static. Or if they're stationary, sorry, or if they are flying. Um, I'm sure there's probably a setting where I can make them bigger. In fact, yeah, because that's it. Oh, get away you, please. Go away. Go away. <laughs> How annoying. So that says it's, they're at a flight level something. These don't say that they're at a flight level something, so I'm guessing that is the airport there. That is my educated guess. 
Uh, but I'm obviously referring to my map, looking at that and looking at my um, instruments as well. Anticipation of what's happening. This cloud's horrible, isn't it? Wow, go away, man. Obviously, the cloud level's quite low. We're at 5,000 steady, so unless it clears further ahead of us, um, we're going to have this until we uh, start descending in a bit more. It is quite chunky, a bit grey, so it's going to be potential rain cloud. Come on, what's happening? So if we end up doing our own navigation, uh, I would personally head to kind of this point here, do a left turn, left turn onto this waypoint here and then bring it in. Um, for here, we need to be below 3,800 meters. So if I get to here and ATC doesn't tell me anything, then I'm going to start descending to 3,000 meters. In fact, I'm actually going to set that up here just to preempt uh, the altitude of the airport is uh, 40 feet, so that's all good. So you can request altimeter whenever you wish and obviously if you just then wanted to do your own thing you could just cancel IFR. Uh, if you was in VATSIM and you just kind of just wanted to do your own thing you can just disconnect. Um, you won't get into trouble for that. In fact they actually recommend if you're having any problems, especially if you've got any simulation problems then you actually just disconnect from your simulator Definitely don't pause the game, uh, don't do any replays. Okay, so we'd actually defend. Oh my lord! We're actually descending. Why do I keep saying defending? <laughs> We're actually descending to 2000, not 3000, so that's good. Uh, we're heading on. So we're running kind of more parallel with uh, the runway now, being 27, and we're heading on 90, so that is pretty much the opposite direction. So it isn't too bad that Vectin you, you in, well we'll see, see if the rest of it goes well, however um, it's not too bad. Uh, Vatsim guys, obviously they're professionals, they've been trained, they're qualified to do all of this stuff, some more so than others. And the time, as you can see on the clock, is 13.13 Zulu, uh, local time. Is it 6.43 local? Wow, okay. Oh, we have a bit of rain. Of course, so through some rain clouds. Let's put a bit of wipers on. Two, 
Sutra Bhati Shivaji International. Alchemy 2958. Speed Bird 333. This doesn't happen That's on Bat Sim. You don't, you're not constantly being told the alt altimeter. Uh, just to let you know, guys. Oh, I can see land. Yay! Right, so the airport is over. Over that water. Over there. 2500. Right, that's where we are heading. It might actually be over there. To be, he uh, to be honest. Uh, right, to... Uh, 360. She's north. So it looks like she's going to box us up north and then do a left turn. And I feel like I'm incredibly low here. What do you reckon, guys? A little bit scary. Although it doesn't give us an above altitude, so we should be fine. And that's the waypoint that I would have been going to if I was doing my own navigation. So it's not too far off, is it? To be fair, I mean, it's not spot on, but it's not too far off. And yeah, there's the runway there. We can see the lights. So those lights, uh, the um, red writing of the planes is what I thought. So it looks like we're going to probably head to round about here somewhere and then we'll do a left turn again and vector in and when once once we've got eyeballs uh, we will hit our VOR and approach. So yeah, happy with this guys. Um, it's not going too bad. Not fantastic by any means. It's not VATSIM by any means. But for anyone that is... Uh, wanting a progression or maybe wants to kind of s have the feeling of doing VATSIM but without being on VATSIM then this is kind of like the, the next best step I guess right we're going on a heading of 300 Actually, not a bad scenery, is it? Again, I've not paid paid any uh, or paid for any scenery for this place. It is what it is. This is right out of the box. Right, so we need to go on the heading of two seven zero, and then when we have the field in sight, which we do, we're going to report field in sight. Flaps 5. Gear down flaps 15. Oh, you know, I haven't done. I haven't done this, so we want to be at 220, uh, 124. Let's get that down. 
Right, we are clear to land. I'm coming in a little bit fast, so I'll put my speed brakes up just to get that speed down. Um, and then we will take them back off again so that they're armed. But we've got VOR lock, we're on the glide slope. Everything's all looking fine. Um, I put the, or went to put on that too late, so we will be doing it manual. Wow, these um, buildings are a little bit close, aren't they? Crikey, Batman! Looks like we've got a bit of crosswind, kind of snaking off to the side. Right, I've got hands on ready. Right, I have control. I have control. Wow, this crosswind's nasty. Let's kind of get it over a bit, please. Please. Let's roll it. Yes, yes, we're safe, we're safe. Oh, great landing. Okay, speed brakes are up. Reverses are on. What the? Speed break up. Well, I'm not quite sure what happened then. My controller, oh, not my, my controller, my um. Reversers normal. Reversers just didn't actually work then at all. That was a little bit um, of a hair raising moment. Wow. Sorry, passengers. It almost looked like I was doing a touch and go then. That was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, oh, I know why. You know what it is? Right, I've, I have really done some boo boos in this flight. Um, and that's what happened when you uh, aren't concentrating. You're just doing all sorts of things, and you're trying to watch TV while you're flying. After it landing checklist. doesn't work. I broke my flaps. As you can see, one of them stuck on flaps 10, one of them stuck near flaps 15, so they didn't even go down to flaps 30. Um, yeah, that was After just a complete... Checklist completed. That was a, a complete cluster of a landing. Thankfully... It is all about the ATC guys. Um, it's all about the ATC. So, no concentrating on my flight flying skills today, please. They were dreadful. Dreadful, dreadful. But yes, so now it's telling us um, we need to taxi via... Um, certain taxi points, obviously you would make note of that, have a look on your chart and then follow those taxi signs. Um, in the game we have this convenient yellow line which we can follow. I know you don't get that in real life but this isn't real life. So where I actually wanted to park, obviously I was saying where I wanted to park, um, this is actually taking us somewhere else. And that's what would happen in Vatsim as well, so just be aware of that. You can have all the best intentions of wanting to park somewhere, um, but um, the controller may send you somewhere completely different. I hope he's not sending me like 10,000 miles away. Let's have a little look. Oh yeah, of course. Thanks. You're going to park me all the way over there. Right, sorry about that guys. Obviously not my intentions of having to park all the way over there. So we're going to do a little bit of a Ryanair taxi here and I'm not looking at my speeds. So please don't be looking at my ground speed. I just want to get over there quickly get this uh, flight over so the landing wasn't too bad but then for some reason I don't know what happened but I hit my reverses 
uh, push my throttle forward and it the reversers wasn't actually on so then it just put my engines back up and wanted to take off again thankfully I was quick enough to turn it back off again um, re-hit the um, reverses and then it worked but by that point I was already going pretty slow uh, yes we did go straight over a runway there but ATC didn't tell us to stop short uh, in real life <laughs> I say real yeah in real life and that's him you would stop short and anyway just look just in case you just never know what someone's doing uh, just in case ATC is for whatever reason just like had a sip of tea and missed someone wanting to take off or land but we're almost here so yeah that is that's pretty much it guys that is it for the um, air traffic control in game uh, we will do more of these flights using the ATC just gives a gives us that extra element of uh, content for me to kind of go through I don't know why it's telling me to taxi right where there's a plane so we will go off to the left and park there uh, yeah it just gives you that extra element of content that you can do within the game uh, within the flight simulation rather than just flying there's so much you can add to this um, you've got your uh, Earth Hauler 2 which obviously we're doing uh, and there's other software out there that you can use uh, we've got the in-game ATC it's not fantastic by any means but you know it's practical it it does something um, so we can't really complain too much about it uh, yes it could be better 100% it could be better but you know I'm not going to moan about it right let us um, stop here I put my parking brake on parking brake on please please and thank you and that will do us let us do our shutdown procedure uh, let me check my fuel to put into uh, sim toolkit pro so complete flight uh, started off with 12,970 kilos and we are finishing 3262 cancel them and that's it guys so flights done um, ATC is covered like I say I'm going to do more of that it wasn't it wasn't the best tutorial I guess on uh, ATC and flying in and all that sort of stuff but I just wanted to throw it out there we're gonna do the same again next flight I'll be looking starting to look at charts so we'll start off with the departure at airport looking at the taxiway and I might, I'll do two actually I will do the departure airport taxi in and also the departure uh, if we've got a SID okay if we haven't got a SID then there's, it's irrelevant looking at that anyway well we can we can look at it and talk about it but then we will actually be going to a SID um, and then going forward from that we can look at arrival approach um, the airport at the arrival location combining them all together on one of the videos so that we're doing all of it and getting that into our heads and then we will um, delve into the world of VATSIM so once again guys thank you very much for watching I hope that it has uh, helped some of you out uh, giving you an idea of what you can do with uh, traffic control um, something that is on the top of my list to do is a full cold and dark startup so that is definitely uh, on the plans I'm not sure which one I'm going to do that on I'll probably do it on one of the shorter legs rather than on the long legs uh, so that I've got a little bit more to add into that video but other than that guys as always stay safe look after yourselves and I shall see you next week um, hopefully on Monday for our um, next departure which I'm not going to tell you just yet Love you all. Take care. See you soon.